One of the issues that the enemies of the one holy Roman Catholic and Apostolic Church like to use to beat it over the head with is the Galileo affair. The accusation goes like this. Galileo discovered that the earth and all the planets revolve around the sun, as opposed to everything revolving around the earth. He tried to tell everyone, but the Catholic Church arrested him, put him on trial, threw him in the dungeon, and tortured him until he recanted. However, since then, the world has come to accept that it has been proven that the earth revolves around the sun and not the other way around. But is all of that true? First, we need to give a little background. Medieval Europe was not 20th or 21st century America. There was no such thing as freedom of religion, freedom of expression, or freedom of speech. And the Catholic Church had oversight over science. So we cannot expect the Catholic Church or the people of that time to have the same values that we have now. Those values would have been foreign to them. You don't have to like that, but you do need to take it into consideration. Also, when the Catholic Church had oversight over the affairs of science, scientists could not call something a fact unless they could prove it. This comes into play with the Galileo controversy. Next, we need to recognize that this has nothing to do with flat earth. Whether people believed in a flat earth or a round earth was not the issue. The issue was geocentrism, which means everything revolves around the earth, and heliocentrism, which means everything revolves around the sun. Now let's dispel a few myths. Myth number one, it has been proven that the earth revolves around the sun. This is not true. We can neither prove nor disprove heliocentrism or geocentrism. This has been admitted by many modern scientists, including Albert Einstein and Stephen Hawking, because everything is relative. The only thing we really know for sure is that something is moving. Either we are moving along with everything else, or everything else is revolving around us. And no matter where you stand in the universe, it looks like everything is revolving around you. There have been attempts to prove the Earth is moving, and they've all failed. And I'll tell you how I know this. About 10 years ago, I used to go online and debate atheists, usually about evolution. Now, I don't have a problem with evolution as a theory. My problem is science calling it a fact when it has not been proven. And when I bring this up, the atheists would always say the same thing. They would ask me, do you believe the earth revolves around the sun? I would say yes. Then they would say, we don't know for sure. You can't prove it. We can't detect the motion of the earth. But since everything else in the universe revolves around something, the assumption is that we do too. And a consensus of scientists say it's a fact, so it's a fact. Myth number two, the Catholic Church had a problem with the heliocentric model, and that's why they persecuted Galileo. This is easily disproved by the fact that the heliocentric model was not developed by Galileo, but rather by Nicholas Copernicus, who was a churchman, and whose research was funded by the Catholic Church, as Galileo's was. The Catholic Church never persecuted Copernicus, because they didn't have a problem with the model itself, and the Catholic Church knew what Galileo was researching. In fact, the Catholic Church came up with a Gregorian calendar based on the Copernican model. So you can see the Catholic Church did not have a problem with the Copernican model, at least not before Galileo. Myth number three. Galileo was thrown into a dungeon and tortured by the Catholic Church because of his theory. Galileo was never tortured. He was put under house arrest in a villa while he was on trial, overlooking the Mediterranean with a maid, a cook, and a valet. And he was allowed to continue his work, as well as stroll through gardens and take carriage rides. If you consider that torture, sign me up. Also, the vast majority of what he presented to the Inquisition and what we know of his work today and his most important work was done while he was under house arrest. So, myth number four, he was not allowed to work, is also disproven. It is important to point out that many clergymen, bishops and priests, especially the Jesuits, supported Galileo, and many scientists did not. So the idea that the clergy was against Galileo and the scientists were on his side is another myth. He was as much at odds with the scientific community of his time as he was the church. Everyone involved, including Galileo himself, were devout Roman Catholics, God-believing, Jesus-worshipping, Eucharist-adoring, Mary-venerating Catholics. And Galileo died in good standing with the church and was not excommunicated. There were no atheists involved in this scenario. So why atheists take up the mantle of Galileo is a little mind-boggling. 
It is also important to point out that no scientist today agrees with any of the scientific conclusions Galileo put forward during his Inquisition. So the idea that Galileo proved the church wrong is again another myth. The reality is Galileo was wrong about a great many things. For instance, he believed that the tides were evidence of the motion of the earth. In other words, he believed the motion of the earth was what caused the tides to come in and recede. Today, no scientist believes that. Rather, they all believe that it is because of the gravitational pull on the moon. And what Galileo was proposing was not the heliocentric model that we know of today. What he was saying, as well as Copernicus, was that the entire universe revolved around our sun. And of course, no scientist believes that today. So if the Catholic Church did not have a problem with his scientific theory, and many clergymen, including bishops, supported him, how did he get into trouble with the Catholic Church? Well, Galileo was a genius. And like a lot of geniuses, he was very arrogant and would not admit when he was wrong even when confronted with overwhelming proof. He would stubbornly hold to his incorrect position, such as his tides hypothesis. He also liked to show off his intelligence by publicly humiliating people, and he was not well liked by his peers. Of course, Galileo was not brought before the Inquisition for being a jerk, but it does play a significant role when he is. He claimed the heliocentric model that the earth revolves around the sun was a fact, but he could not prove it. At the time, there was no evidence, even through his observations, that would prove heliocentrism, which means everything revolves around the sun, over geocentrism, which means everything revolves around the earth. Of course, today, as I said earlier, nobody believes that everything revolves around our sun. The heliocentric model has been retooled over the centuries to the model that we have today that says there are solar systems, and in each solar system the planets revolve around their sun, and then those suns revolve around the galaxy, and then the galaxies revolve around the universe. So again, Galileo was wrong in his heliocentric hypothesis, as was Copernicus. And the church told him not to claim that his heliocentric model was true, and he sort of obeyed at first. But then the Archduchess Christina of Tuscany expressed her concerns that Galileo's theories contradicted the Bible. So Galileo wrote her a letter essentially saying, not if we interpret the Bible in light of these discoveries. He references St. Augustine in his work, The Literal Interpretation of Genesis, where Augustine argues that Genesis can be interpreted literally or allegorically, and he quotes Cardinal Baronius saying, the intention of the Holy Spirit is to teach how one goes to heaven, not how the heavens go. Now today, we would call him one of the good guys in science for saying that. However, in the early 17th century, the Catholic Church was fresh off the heels of a Protestant revolution based on personal interpretation of Scripture. The Church basically said, you don't interpret Scripture, we do. And this is what really starts the whole process of the Inquisition with Galileo. The fact that he was reinterpreting Scripture based on his heliocentric model. Now, the only saint in this whole process was St. Robert Bellarmine, who was assigned as the Inquisitor in the Galileo case. He was able to keep everyone pretty much at bay. He was able to calm Galileo down and placate the church. But two things happened that blew everything up. St. Robert Bellarmine died, and so did the Pope. And the man who was elected the new Pope and would become Urban VIII was a supporter and personal friend of Galileo's, who was opposed to silencing him in the past. Galileo saw this as a victory, and he became very bold with his claims. He never thought his friend would side against him. When he was called before the Pope, he told them that he wanted to write a book on how the tides prove the rotation of the earth, but the Pope said rather to write a book discussing the two systems, the heliocentric and the geocentric model, and to remain neutral. Galileo writes this book in a conversational style with three characters discussing the two systems. One character defends heliocentrism, another is a rational man listening to the arguments, and the third is an idiot named Simplicio who defends geocentrism. The book is heavily in favor of heliocentrism. Now, he might have gotten away with it, except the idiot character, Simplicio, quotes the Pope. His friend the Pope feels betrayed and insulted by Galileo and has him brought before the Inquisition, and he is charged with disobedience. The Holy Office produces a letter from Robert Bellarmine stating that Galileo had been ordered not to teach or defend the Copernican system, and Galileo produces a letter from Bellarmine contradicting that letter and Robert Bellarmine is dead and can't clarify the matter. In the end, the Inquisition stated, We pronounce judge and declare that you, the said Galileo, 
have rendered yourself vehemently suspect by this holy office of heresy, that is, of having believed and held the doctrine which is false and contrary to holy and divine scriptures, that the sun is the center of the world, and that it does not move from east to west, and that the earth does move and is not the center of the world. Galileo was sentenced to house arrest, again, not in a dungeon or regular prison, but in a house across the street from a convent that housed his daughter, who took care of him. He died in good standing with the church while under house arrest. Now, some say the church overreacted, but the reality is Galileo was saying the heliocentric system was a fact when he could not prove it. Of course, in hindsight today, we look at this and say the church was wrong, perhaps, but that does not hurt the church's infallibility since inquisitions are not considered infallible. And to say that the Galileo controversy proves the church was anti-science is ludicrous, considering there would be no modern science were it not for the Catholic Church. The Catholic Church is the one who encouraged and funded the study of the natural sciences that led to all these discoveries. And like I said in the beginning, it's not entirely certain that the universe is heliocentric and not geocentric. The evidence seems to support heliocentrism, and the vast majority of astronomers say it is, so I'm not saying it's not. I'm saying there's a chance it may not be. When it comes to science, I'm agnostic. What people don't understand is that science develops models and then interpret the data based on those models. Then they present it as if it's true, as if they had discovered something. But in reality, it's like they have 10 pieces of a thousand piece puzzle, and they say based on these 10 pieces, this is what the whole puzzle looks like. Well, there's no way they've got that completely right. Not to mention when they discover something that contradicts their model, they come up with a theory to explain it, present it as true, and people believe science has discovered something, when in reality, they're just trying to save the model. The models say the answer is five, but the evidence says two plus two, so they assume a plus one and add it and say, we know it's there, we just haven't found it. The best example of this is dark matter and dark energy. People think science found dark matter and dark energy. But what they found is that if the Big Bang is true, 90% of all matter and energy it should have produced is not there. But rather than say, maybe the Big Bang isn't true, they say, no, the matter and energy is there, we just can't detect it. But the same data can be interpreted in light of alternative models just as easily that don't require those placeholders. But I realize the current models that seem on the surface to contradict the Bible could be correct. But that in no way proves the Bible wrong. I agree with Augustine, as did Galileo. Certain passages of the Bible, such as the creation account and statements about the earth and the sun, could be literal or allegory. So in the end, we don't really know, and we won't know for sure until all things are revealed. And no matter how it turns out, whether the earth revolves around the sun or the sun revolves around the earth, scripture will be proven inerrant and the church infallible. Until my next video, God bless.